We found that the participants in the program tend to be people who have realized, given their current position, that they really need to know more about how their job relates to finance. In particular, they need to know how finance looks at the performance of their business, the kinds of metrics that are used to evaluate the business, and they need to be able to engage in intelligent conversations with the finance people. They oftentimes are sitting in on meetings in which a lot of financial results are being discussed, and quite frankly, oftentimes they're not getting as much as they could and should be getting out of those meetings because they don't really understand the metrics, they don't understand much of the terminology. And what we try to do in the program is to provide a user-friendly way of trying to overcome those issues that crop up for non-financial people. We get a wide variety of different functional backgrounds and prior experience in mem to people who come to the program. We have marketing folks, we have people in the operations of the business, we have people who are engineers and are into technology, we have human relations people. Um, what they have in common with each other is they're non-financial people, but what they also have in common is they've reached a point in their career where they realize that they really need to know more about how their particular area of the business relates to finance. In the program, we are strongly emphasizing the idea that ironically, the most important decisions that drive financial performance are not made by finance people. They're made by people in the operations of the business. And so we need to tie the link a little bit more closely between those decisions and the financial outcomes that result from those decisions. So the skills that people take away from the program you are, uh, I think, four particularly important ones. One is just being able to speak the language of business. For better, for worse, accounting terminology has become the language of business. And if you don't speak the language, then you're going to be at a disadvantage. And a lot of it is terminology that's used day to day in, in conversations that take place, meetings that take place. And many of these accounting terms also have a generic definition. But the accounting definition is different from the generic definition. And you really need to know the difference between the two. Second thing that we try to do is to focus on the importance of being able to use financial information intelligently, to tie the link between the decisions that are made by people and running the business and the financial outcomes that result. And along with that, then, you need to be able to read a set of financial information. And the term to read is often used, that you read a set of financials. And what that means is you don't get bogged down all the detail of the, what's being presented, but you find the story that's being told about the strategy, how it's being executed, problems that exist, and you can think intelligently about the solutions to the problems. And you can do that without getting bogged down in all the detail, the financial detail. To do that, there's some metrics that you have to learn about. They are the metrics that are used by companies all over the world to measure performance. You need to know how they're calculated, but you also need to know some perspective on them. What's good? What's bad? What's mediocre? What could you do to make them better in the future? And then we develop some financial tools that are used to do financial analysis of prospective things the company might do. One important tool we focus on is discounted cash flow that's used so extensively all over the world by companies to try to decide which particular projects to invest in and perhaps which ones they should not invest in.